Here we see a customer table that has just been created. It is populated with data, but there are no indexes on this table. The select statement selected all rows from the table. Notice there are 18,484 rows in this table. In the query options, I set statistics time and I.O. on to see how long and how many I.O. operations for the query. So on the Messages tab, I can see that it read 9,242 pages, took 5,166 milliseconds, and it read the whole table because it has no indexes. You can see that 9,242 is one half of 18,484, which tells you that two rows fit on one page. Some of the fields in this table have a lot of data, and a page is only 8K, and rows cannot cross over pages, so the whole row has to fit on the page, with the exception of a couple data types. So now you know some statistics about my table. And you might notice here, when you look at the list of fields, and you look at the data in the fields, none of these fields are sorted and that's because there's no clustered index on this table. A clustered index literally means a table that is stored in a sorted order. A clustered index is not a separate index from your table. It is your table. In fact, if you don't have a clustered index, your table is called a heap. So for instance, if I add a clustered index on this table on first name, you can see here I set it to clustered. Once I have a clustered index on the first name column and I query the entire table again, notice now my first name column is sorted alphabetically ascending. So the table itself is now stored in an ascending fashion. But let's delete that index because I really have no good reason to sort the table by first name. So a clustered index is like a phone book. It's where the data and the index are one. And something to keep in mind is when you create a primary key, like I'm probably going to do with customer ID, before I save this table and save the change that I just made, I might want to review a few things about the key that I just made. If I right click over here in the designer and select indexes and keys, you'll see there's this primary key key that's being created. And before I commit these changes, I have the option to choose whether or not that is created as a clustered index. I'm going to leave that as a yes. I'm also going to ensure that customer ID is automatically updated as an identity field and then I'm going to commit my table. Now when I go back and query my table, you can see now that it's sorted by customer ID. By making this an auto-incrementing identity field and also the clustered index, this means that when new rows are inserted into this table, that they occur at the very end of the table, in other words, on the last page. Let's take a scenario where I made territory the clustered index. In that case, if one territory were busier than the rest, let's say one territory were a lot busier than the rest, and inserting a lot more data into the table, those inserts would have to align with the clustered index. So if the territory name were alphabetically somewhere in the middle, that would not allow the table to simply grow from the end. Because when the table grows from the end, it doesn't disturb any of the existing pages. But if the table has to grow in the middle, and it has a clustered index, then this will affect the sorting. So all the new values have to be inserted in the middle, and all values that come afterwards have to be moved. However, if I'm doing a lot of reporting by territory, having a clustered index on territory might seem like a great idea. So you have many things to consider when choosing your clustered index. Keep in mind, you can only have one clustered index per table because, of course, the table can only be stored in one order at a time. Please remember to subscribe.